is obvious that the aid pass will not take Africa to where it has to be. We do not want to be a scar on anybody's conscience. We do not want to be pitted. We do not want to be either pawns or victims. And we certainly do not want headline writers to continue to compete to find the most lurid adjectives to describe our continent and its peoples. Africa no longer wants to be the deficit place to go to find the footage to illustrate famine stories. We no longer want to offer the justification for those who want to be rude and abusive about Africa and her peoples. It is time to build our economies that are not dependent on charity and handouts. We understand the aid fatigue phenomenon. We understand that donor populations want their governments to spend their aid budgets in their own countries. We have learned from long and bitter experience that no matter how generous the charity, we would, and indeed, we have remained poor. I spoke right at the beginning of this conversation about facts and figures on which we can all agree. Ours is a rich continent has the world's second fastest economic growth rates, the world's fastest growing region for foreign direct investment, and in possession of nearly 30% of the Earth's remaining mineral resources. And yet, the masses of the African peoples remain poor. Let us look for a moment at a country right in the center of the continent, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Can there be and is there a richer and better endowed country on this planet than the DRC? Every precious mineral that humankind has been known to hanker after is in the DRC. Every mineral required to run the wheels of modern industry is in the DRC. Why is the DRC currently supply the largest number of people seeking refugee status that arrive in the United States of America? Why is the DRC listed among the poorest nations of the world? This is not right. We need to change the statistics. If we simply ground and sow the cocoa in paste form, instead of selling the cocoa beans, we double our earnings. In much the same way as we would double our earnings from gold if we sold it refined, than its raw state. We are determined to process these products. I do understand that there are nations who have built their industrial complex around the value chain of our raw commodities. It is time to transform that setup. It is time we were responsible for processing our own resources. It is time that we in Africa manage our resources well to generate wealth for our population. The report of the panel, chaired by the highly respected former South African President Tabu Mbeki, on the illicit flow of funds from, the, from Africa, raises the lid on many had always suspected, but did not have the figures to support. According to the report, Africa is losing annually more than 50 billion United States dollars through illicit financial outflows. The report revealed further that between 2000 and 2008, 250 billion, two billion United States dollars, representing 56.2% of the illicit flows of funds from the continent was from the extractive industries, including mining. Even when we think we're dealing in an area of a level, with a level playing field, like trade. It turns out Africa gets a bad deal. The recent reported events between the government of Tanzania and the mining companies that operate there ought to give all of us cause for pause. For the avoidance of doubt, 
And just in case there was anyone who was unaware of my personal beliefs and those of my party, the New Patriotic Party, I support and believe in business and in the private sector as the generator of wealth and jobs. But surely, investors and business people give the private sector a bad name if they persist in treating Africa as the place to make extraordinary returns on money. Investors find innovative ways to avoid paying the taxes that they should in the African countries in which they operate. In a recent example, of, in the BBC report, showed an example of this in the fishing industry. No one is going to sort out these matters for Africa except Africans themselves. We need to have our own bright and sharp lawyers to keep us abreast with the sharp and bright lawyers that our trade partners have. We need to have our own bright and sharp technologies to help keep us abreast with our competitors. With Africa's population set to reach some two billion people in 20 years' time, an African common market presents immense opportunities to bring prosperity to our continent with hard work, enterprise, innovation, and creativity. It is evident that the time for African integration should be now. Hence the importance of the success of the continental free trade area. A working common continental market has to be a very fundamental objective of all peoples and governments on the continent. Peace and stability on the continent are essential to the viability of the market. And we have to work to establish peace all over our great continent, a Pax Africana that has turned its back on terrorism, conflict, and instability. A new paradigm of leadership is called for. Leaders who are committed to governing their peoples according to the rule of law, respect for individual liberties and human rights, and the principles of democratic accountability. Leaders who are looking past commodities to position their countries in the global marketplace. Leaders who are determined to free their peoples from a mindset of dependence, aid, charity, and handouts. Leaders who are bent on mobilizing Africa's own immeasurable resources to resolve Africa's problems. Leaders who recognize the connectedness of their peoples and economies to those of their neighbors. This new generation of African leaders should help bring prosperity and dignity to our continent and its long-suffering peoples. We do want to, and we shall work, to take Africa to where it deserves to be, as a prosperous and dynamic member of the world community. We need to, and we shall move Africa beyond aid. Thank you very much for your attention, and may God bless Mother Africa. 